What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to implement an online web chat in the browser using Python and using Flask. So let us get right into it. Alright, so for this project today, we're going to start by installing two external Python modules that we're going to need. First of all, the web framework Flask. Second of all, the Flask socket IO module, which is essentially uh, allowing us to work with sockets easily in Flask in the backend. And for that, we're going to open up the command line and we're going to type pip install Flask, in my case already installed, and also pip install Flask dash socket IO, in my case also installed already. So then we type from Flask import Flask with a capital F and also render template because we're going to have an HTML file with the front end. So basically just two text boxes for username message, then a message history in the form of a diff box, and then a button that basically just sends the message with the respective username. Um, and the interface is not not going to be very beautiful. It's just going to be a bunch of uh, HTML elements clustered together. And then we're going to have some JavaScript that interacts with the back end and we're going to import uh, also in the front end socket IO because that's what we need to communicate with the socket IO in the back end. Um, but let's start with the back end first, we're going to say from flask socket IO import socket IO and uh, sent. And then we're going to start with the definition of a basic or the creation of a basic flask app. So app equals flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore. And then we're going to say app dot config, we can set the secret key here. So this is a dictionary secret. And of course, in production, you should pick something reasonable. Here, I'm just going to say secret exclamation mark, one, two, three, something like that. Um, and then we're going to say socket IO equals socket IO, we're going to bind this to the app. And we're going to say that cross origin is allowed. So course underscore allowed underscore origins is going to be just star. And uh, then we can start with the functions and we're not going to have too many functions here. This is actually quite simple. The back end, we're going to have a simple handle message uh, function. And we're going to take a message here. And all we're going to do here is we're going to print for the log here that we received a message and the message is going to be whatever the message is, right? And then we're going to check if that message is a certain message, for example, uh, in our case, it's going to be user connected, because this is going to be the special message that we get whenever a user connects. Uh, this is going to be an anonymous chat. So we're not going to have, um, by the way, we need two equal signs here, we're not going to have uh, the username automatically, we're going to be able to send a username with each message. Again, you can refine that I have a bunch of videos on my channel where I show you how to implement more sophisticated chat rooms. This is now just showing you how uh, showing you how to do that in flask. So we're going to say, okay, if the message is user connected, we're not going to do anything. Or actually, we should say if it's not user connected, we're going to do something and we're going to send a message. And we're going to broadcast this message to all. So we're going to say broadcast equals true. If the message is not this one particular message that every client is going to send when they connect to the server, we're going to broadcast a message, we're not going to broadcast this message, we're going to broadcast all the other messages. Um, and on top of that, we need to add the decorator socket IO dot on, and then message like that. So this is basically the keyword that is going to trigger this thing. So on the event message, this is going to be uh, this is going to happen. Um, and then we're going to say now app dot route slash so basically the default route is going to be the index function here, we're just going to return render template. And we're going to render the template. Uh, actually, no, we're going to render the template index HTML. But because we are in flask, we need to create now a directory here, and we need to call it templates. And inside of that directory, we need to create the index.html file, because otherwise, it's not going to find it. And by doing that here, uh, this is going to work. So um, yeah, that's that. And finally, here for the back end, we're going to say, okay, if the name equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we're going to say socket IO run 
the app and the host is going to be now for the beginning local host. We're going to change that later on to also be able to connect from other computers in the local area network. Um, but that is essentially the back end. Now let us move on to the front end. What you can see here is already some basic HTML structure code provided by PyCharm, generated by PyCharm. And the first thing we want to do here now is we want to import two external JavaScript libraries. One is jQuery, which is very useful for animation and interaction in the front end. And the second one is socket IO, which we need to communicate from the front end to the back end with the socket IO in the back end. And for that, we're going to use content delivery networks or a content delivery network. Um, and you can go basically on Google and type CDN and then jQuery or CDN and then socket IO and you're going to find a couple of links here, you just pick one that suits your needs. So if you need the full thing, you use this one. Uh, otherwise, you also have some min stuff. And essentially what we do once we have a content delivery network uh, is we create script tags, I'm going to copy those now because I don't want to type them out myself. Uh, we basically type script src for source equals the link that you just found and then you close the script tag. So nothing too complicated doesn't require a lot of brain power, you just open up a script tag src equals and then the link that you found when googling CDN jQuery, for example, and you can see here I have jQuery min.js and socket IO min.js. So that's enough for this video. Um, that is that. And what we do then is we go to the body and we're going to create a bunch of elements and also inject or not inject, but also create our own uh, JavaScript code segment. So we're going to start here with a simple diff box having the ID messages. And here we're going to obviously have our messages. And below that we're going to have input type, come on text, and it's going to have the ID username. And it's going to have a placeholder username like this. And then we're going to copy that and change this to message and message like that. And finally, we need a button and a button is going to have the ID sent btn and a text sent. So already we can open this up in the Explorer. And then we can open this in Firefox, you can see what this looks like. Quite simple, doesn't have any functionality yet, because the functionality needs to be written in JavaScript. And please excuse if I have to double check with my prepared code a couple of times, I'm not a JavaScript coder. Uh, I know my way around basic JavaScript, but I'm not really uh, an expert in JavaScript. So I need to double check with the syntax a couple of times. But essentially, we type script type text JavaScript. And then inside of that, we say dollar and then uh, document dot ready. And here we have this function. And inside of that, we're now going to start by saying var socket equals um, io dot connect. And we're going we're to connect to the back end, the back end is located at HTTP. Uh, colon slash slash localhost colon 5000. So this is the flask backend. This is what this Python script is going to be uh, doing. This is the backend um, that is running on port 5000. And um, then we're going to say now uh, socket on so when we connect. So on connect, we're going to have a function being executed. And this function is going to send a message to the backend. So we're going to say socket send and we're going to send a function, uh, send a message user connected with exclamation mark, which is exactly uh, this message that we're checking for to not broadcast to everyone else. So that is that we should not forget here the semicolons because we're not in Python any longer. Um, and then we also have a function for uh, or a socket on for this message here. So this thing is then going to be connected to that part. And here we're going to say socket on message. And we're going to have function that has data as a parameter, or you can also say message. Um, and this data is then going to be added to the diff box. So we have this diff box here, we want to add some p elements, some paragraphs to that for each message. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, dollar hashtag messages dot append. And here we're going to append now a dollar p tag. So just a p tag dollar is just a syntax for jQuery, I think. And then we're going to say here the text is going to be whatever the data is. 
So that is that. And finally, we're going to also implement the functionality of the button. We're going to say, okay, if someone presses the send BTN, so send BTN on and then click. If that happens, we're going to execute this function here. And this function is going to say socket dot sent. And we're going to send to the socket now the content of username. So val username val plus a simple colon and uh, a space plus the content of message. So the val of message. That is that and also semicolon. And then finally, we're going to say, oh, by the way, we need to use here the hashtags because we're dealing with IDs. Uh, there you go. And then we're going to say here, message dot val is going to be empty. So we're going to set this to empty when we send a message. And that is essentially the code, right? So this is everything we need. Now let's see if this works. We're going to start the Python backend here. So I'm going to run this. Uh, you can see here localhost 5000 is running and then I can go back to this one here. And I can say Mike sends hello. Let's see if that works. There you go. Mike sends hello. I can do this a bunch of times. Now Mike sends nothing because the message is empty. Now I'm not sure if we can fix that. I'm not an HTML pro and I'm proud of not being an HTML pro. But I think that if we say required, we should be able to force that field. Now I don't know why I, why I stopped the server. Um, but essentially now, okay, no, still works probably only works with frameworks or maybe I don't know enough HTML, but we can chat here. So um, I think if I open the file now, where is it this one here with the Chrome browser as well. And I say neural nine, hello, Mike, and I sent this, you can see that Mike also sees that and then I can write something here. And we can find that here as well. Now let us go ahead and add some very basic styling to the page, nothing too fancy, no colors, no color schemes, no shadows, just some basic positioning, and maybe a better font and a better font size. So we're gonna uh, do this with inline styling, which is really not something you should do for anything other than testing and playing around and experimenting. But for this video, I think it suits the needs. So we're going to say here now text align and the body is going to be center, then the font family is going to be uh, Arial and otherwise serif. And then we're going to say the font size is going to be 14 PT. Um, and for the diff box, we're going to say style equals margin zero auto so that it's centered. And then we're going to say the width is going to be 60%. Uh, and the text align inside of that is going to be left. I think that is enough. There you go. Now we could also argue that we could have a min height here. So we could say min height is going to be 300 pixels or something. Just so we there you go just so we have some room up here. And I think the server is not running right. But I think this looks kind of cool. So there you go, this works. And yeah, you can see now it's wider. Uh, it's aligned left, but also the whole thing is in the center. And of course, we could also increase that. But I think that's a pretty good interface. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and try to access this service from another computer in the same network. In order to now take this web chat and make it accessible to other computers in the network, we need to change the host from localhost to the actual private IP address of this computer. And if you don't know which one that is, you can open up your command line. So CMD on Windows, and you can type IP config, and you will find your IPv4 address here. In my case, 192.168.0.164. If you're on Linux, you can type if config, so if config, and you're going to also find your INET4 address. So we change localhost now to 192.168.0.164. In your case, probably a different IP address. And we do the same thing in the index.html file. So instead of connecting to localhost 5000, uh, 5, we connect to 
192.168.0.164 in this case. And I also have now here my Linux laptop, which also has the exact same HTML file with the respective IP address. So also with this same IP address of this computer I'm recording on. And what we do now is we save that and we run the server on this machine here. And we go into the browser, we refresh the website, I do the same thing here on my other computer. And then I can start by saying Florian sends the message. Hello, world. And then I can click on send, you can see okay, hello world. And now I'm going to type here on this laptop as neural nine, I'm going to type an answer message. I'm going to say subscribe to neural nine sent. There you go, you can see that and then I can answer back, I can say okay, okay, I will do that. There you go. And I see also the answer here on my laptop, even though you probably don't see that through the camera. But those are two separate computers. And of course, I also have a tutorial, I think it should already be uploaded by this time you watch by the time you're watching this, or it will be uploaded soon on how to put such applications onto the internet using ng rock. So you can use services like ng rock to actually tunnel connections to forward connections from the internet to your local host locally hosted uh, web chat web service, whatever. So you can also take this application here and actually put it um, into the internet so that people can access your application via ng rock, for example, or you can of course pay for a server and host it there. But this is how you build a simple Python web server, uh, web chat using flask. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.